We come through the winter months, we are less active, and we eat more. And we get to the springtime and we think, hmm, summer's coming. How much do I weigh? And we try to figure out, okay, I want to be a little more active this summer. And to be able to do that, I have to have some energy. And i got to get rid of some weight so that I can actually get out and do something. And therefore, we become concerned during the springtime about the weight that we carry and the weight that we will be carrying. Or at least there are some who are concerned about that. Here's the question. How much do you weigh? There are so many things, spiritually speaking, that weigh down so many people. So many people are walking around in this world and they are burdened by things that cause them to weigh heavily. And it weighs heavily on their minds. God does not mean for us to walk around that way. God does not want us to be people who are burdened by life. He does not want us to get up every day and dread the days that are coming because of the weight that we're carrying around. He wants us to get rid of those burdens and he offers us the opportunity and the ability to do so. We just have to find it. Therefore, on Sunday mornings this summer, let us see the weights that we carry and how we can get rid of them. A number of Burdens that people carry, I want us to consider during this summer series. We begin today with what commonly is one of the burdens that most people have in their lives. One that they seem to carry around, or at least more people seem to carry around than others, and it's the burden of worry. In fact, there are some people who are so burdened down with worry that it has actually been observed that some people respond this way. You get up in the morning, and this person notices that the day is beautiful and everything is working great and you get up and you go to work and everybody you pass in the hallway is nice and, and you're just excited and, and the boss is not mean and nasty. In fact, he hands out compliments. And you're able to go through the entire day and you come home and you feel relaxed and it's been a wonderful day. And the evening goes by so peacefully. And at the end of the evening you sit down and this person begins to worry because they have nothing to worry about. I've known people like that. In fact, it doesn't seem normal for some people not to worry. If you are a person burdened with the weight of worry, let us today think about what God says. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 12. And let us today and in this entire series, we are going to do two things. We're going to learn about the weight and then we are going to find how God tells us, here's how you can lose the weight. Now for those who have a physical weight problem, 
I have heard it said that you have to learn about the issue. What is it that is causing you to have the weight issue? Is it too much food? Is it the wrong food? Is it lack of exercise? Is it depression? What is it about the weight that is causing the problem? You have to learn the weight in order to be able to lose the weight. Let us learn about the weight of worry. There's not a person here who having experienced worry says, oh, it's not a problem. Oh yeah, I've been worried, but you know, it didn't feel that bad. It felt rather light, it didn't bother me. No, people who worry are burdened. They have and feel the weight. What does Jesus say about the weight of worry? In the first place, Jesus says, verses 22 to 24, as you learn about the weight of worry, understand that worry is a priority burden. It's a priority burden. Notice what the text says. What does he mention here, verses 22 through 24? He says, people are worried about the body. You're worried about the life. We worry about the things, people worry about the things of a physical nature. That's just what we do. We are in and have been in some difficult economic times. There are people who really are struggling. There are other people who are struggling more because in addition to the economic troubles, they have piled on a burden of worry about them. That's what we do. People who worry are worried about physical things. They worry about having food. They worry about having a house. They worry about a job. They worry about relationships. They worry about paycheck. They worry about, and it's all physical. Worry is a priority issue. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time that you ever heard of or saw someone doing this, biting their fingernails, right? Or I remember when I was in high school and junior high and got really involved in a ball game. I mean really involved. I was nervous and I would take my hair. I'd sit there and I'd twist my hair and when I finally realized it had a big old knot in it, I realized I'd had a problem, you know? When was the last time you heard of, or you or me, when did we ever chew our fingernails or put our hairs in knots over whether we are reading the Bible enough? When was the last time someone got an upset stomach because they weren't sure if they were giving enough to the Lord. When was the last time someone was stressed out because they didn't pray enough? Never heard of that, have you? See, worry is a priority issue. Worry says you are thinking too much about physical things. He tells us in verse 24, here's the deal. Birds don't worry. Birds don't get stress. I don't know that I've ever heard of studies being done on stress on animals. Don't recall ever hearing about that. God says when you worry, it's a priority issue. It's a signal that says... You're spending too much time on the physical. Number two, look at verses 25 and 26. 
As you read those quick verses, what do you see? You see that worry is a reality issue. Which one of you, by worrying, can grow taller? Hmm. Boy, I would love to have been 6'2". You know why? Because I'm not. But if I were 6'2", I would probably love to be 6'4". But I don't know why. Why is 6'2 so important? I don't know. I guess it's because it's taller than I am. Well, could I just sit around and think really hard and grow? <laughs> I don't think it's possible. I'll tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to think really hard. I mean, sweat popping out of my brain because I'm thinking so hard. And by doing so, my hair comes back and it goes back to the original color. I'm not going to use artificial means because God colored it. Well, God in my family. But <laughs> it's colored that way. If I could change it naturally by thinking really hard, what about worry? Worry is a reality issue. Why do people worry? Why do you worry? Well, it, it's pretty popular. So I guess people worry because they've noticed that it works. No, that's not it. The reality is worry does not work. It does nothing. Worry is a reality issue. Look at verses 27. Through 29. Worry is a memory problem. What did God say? God said, I take care of the grass. I take care of the birds. You are more important than either one of them. I will take care of you. We remember that, right? Or do we? Maybe worry is simply, I forgot. Oh, I, I forgot. God, you said you would take care of me. I just forgot. Worry signals. You have forgotten that God said, you're more important than all the things that I take care of. Certainly I will take care of you. But again, look at verse 30. Worry is an acceptance problem. Meaning, God said, I will take care of you. Either I forgot it, or I haven't accepted it. Maybe worry says... I have failed to take God at his word. I remember it. I acknowledge it. I know the Bible says it. I know God promised it, but I haven't accepted it. I don't believe you're telling me the truth, Lord. Is that what worry is? I think it is. Worry says, God, I don't believe that you are going to do what you said you would do. Finally, learning about the weight. We turn to Matthew 6, which is the parallel passage to Luke 12, and we look at verse 34, and we find this. Worry is a time burden. Worry is a time burden. There, Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Why? Because tomorrow has its own problems. Worry is a time burden. Here's what I mean. Here's a good definition, it seems to me, for worry. Worry is defined this way. Living in the wrong day 
That's what worry is. Here I am today. But what am I worried about? Tomorrow, next year, 20 years. Worry is living in the wrong day. Let's live today. There are two days every week that nobody ought to ever worry about. Yesterday, it's gone. Can't fix it. Tomorrow, not here yet. Can't do anything about it. So only today, and you ought not worry about today because worry doesn't work. And if you can do something about it, there's no need to worry. Why should anybody worry? Learn about the weight. It signals that my priorities are in the wrong place. It's a signal that I don't really understand that worry doesn't work. It's a signal that I have forgotten God's promise to care for me. It's a signal that I have not accepted it if I have remembered it. And it's a signal that I'm living in the wrong time. I need to live today. That's what Jesus says about the worry, the weight. Now let's find out how to lose it. This is the big one. How to lose it. Yes, I have a pooch right here. And I got another one right here. And don't any of you laugh because most of you have got the same one. I've seen it. Now, a few of you have worked on it and done well, but I have a pooch. You know what I want? I want it fixed tonight. Here's what I want to do. I want to go to bed. I want to wake up, and it's gone. I want to go to bed looking like this and wake up looking like this. You know why? Because I want it quick, and I want it easy. And I want it now. And whatever works right now, that's what I want. I don't want to spend the next six months on it. Well, since I don't want to spend the next six months, I'm just not going to do it at all. That's where I've come to. But think about this. If you really want to lose the weight, what do you have to do? It takes a little time, doesn't it? If you're going to do it, it's going to take a little bit of time. It's going to take a little bit of effort. It's going to take some persistence look what Jesus said about losing the weight of worry we start in verse 31 seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added to you do not fear little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom Sell what you have. Give alms. Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old. A treasure in the heavens that does not fade away where no thief approaches nor moth destroys for where your treasure is. There will your heart be also. He tells me two things. If I want to lose the weight of worry, I have to do two things. And if I'm not willing to spend the effort, if I'm not willing to spend the time, if I'm not going to be able to do what it says, I won't be successful. Number one, seek the spiritual. Remember, worry is a signal that I have a priority problem. If I have a problem with worry, seek the spiritual. That's where it starts. Let's see what he says. He says, number one, accept the necessity of the spiritual. There are a lot of people in life 
who disregard the spiritual side. Everything is about the physical. Everything is about the temporal. Everything is about what's in this physical world. But here is what Jesus said. You want to get rid of the burden of worry? Are you tired of carrying it around? Is it causing you trouble? It begins by seeking the spiritual. Accept that there is a spiritual side to life. Just accept it. Be willing to say, yes, Lord, it is something that I want to do. What does he say? Seek the kingdom. Paul wrote or said in Acts 17 in verse 27 that they should seek after the Lord and find him and grope after him, though he is not far from every one of us. Luke had just recorded in chapter 11 in verse 10, previous to this, everyone who seeks finds, everyone who asks receives, and everyone who knocks, it is open to them. If you want to get rid of the weight of worry, you have to accept the necessity of the spiritual side of life. Number two, you have to accept the nature of the reality of the physical quickly. Notice what he said. Verse 31. Seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added to you. Think about it. What is he saying? Here are the things that you are worried about. You want them? Yeah, that's why I'm worried about them. Fine. Seek me and I'll give them to you. That's what he's saying. All of the things that people are worried about, the things that they need to get along in life and to exist, all of those things, what does he say? If you seek me, I guarantee you'll have them. The things that clog our minds, that most people are worried about, God has promised to people who seek after him. He put it this way in Malachi 3 and in verse 10. He told the children of Israel, Bring all the treasures to my storehouse that my house will be filled and test me with this that I will pour you out a blessing that is so great you will not be able to hold it. The very things we are worried about, God said, when you seek me, I promise you'll get them. And number three in seeking the spiritual means accept the desire of your father. We have been adopted as sons of God, Romans 8 and verse 15. And notice what he says in the text, verse 32. It is the desire of your father to give you the kingdom. God wants you, he wants me to have the good gifts that he offers doesn't your father want that for you? Most of us grew up in families or are in families where our fathers, we know, want what's best for us. So if you want to get rid of the weight of worry, seek the spiritual. It is necessity. It is a necessity in life. And we really will get what we're worried about anyway because our Father wants us to have his gifts. But second and finally, you want to get rid of the weight of worry? Forego the physical. Forego the physical. Verse 33, sell what you have. And provide alms. I've noticed this. People who are givers are very rarely worriers. Think about it. 
You want to get rid of the burden, the weight of worry? Practice being a giver. People who give traditionally are not people who worry. You know why? Because the mentality and the attitude of giving says, I have what I need. I can share. People who worry hoard because they are concerned. If I become a giver, it will translate and tell my mind, you have what you need. Share with other people. Notice again. At the end of verse 33, make better purchases. We can help our own financial concerns and budgetary problems by being more, have better stewardship, right? Making better purchases. That's exactly what he says here. You forego the physical, make a better purchase. Why do we invest all of this energy and all of this time in physical things, God says, you want to get rid of worry? Invest your energy, your mind, your resources into spiritual things. It'll change your life. It will get worry out of your life because you're concentrating on the spiritual side of life. But finally, look at verse 34. Listen to your heart. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, the wise man said something very interesting. God has put eternity in their hearts. Here's what I believe. Inside of every single individual whom God created, he planted himself. There is a knowledge, a spark. There is something of God inside every individual. And they all know it. They just fail to recognize it. Listen to your heart. The Ecclesiastes writer spent the entire book telling us, you know what I did? I went after money and possessions and wine and women and song because I wanted to feel better and be better. And after I'd gone after all that stuff, I came to find out what the real stuff of life is. Fear God. Keep His commandments. In essential, he was saying, inside of me, there was that spark telling me all along that there's more to life than what's here that I can see. So why would I put all of this effort and all of this time in what I see? Why not invest in that which I see through the mind of faith? You want to lose the weight of worry? Seek the spiritual. Forego the physical. And worry will just melt away. Let me go back to the phrase that you see there that I didn't use. I decided to close with it. You know what this passage says? This verse is 31 to 34. This is Jesus saying, you want to get rid of worry? Here's how you do it. Let God and let go. Now, we always use it the other way, right? Let go and let God. But guess what? Jesus put it this way. Let God seek the spiritual. And then let go forego the physical. If you're weighed down by the burden of worry, Jesus doesn't want you to carry it anymore. And he tells you how to get rid of it. We are here to help anyone who's ready to get rid of the worry and the burdens of life to find out how to do it in particular, especially the burden of sin. Today, that sin burden can be removed when your belief leads you to repent of sins and you're baptized to have it washed away. Today, if you want to get rid of the burdens of life, let us help you if you'll come as we stand and sing.